Good morning friends. Welcome back to Pannika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss what is a static memory allocation, what are the limitations of static memory allocation, then I will discuss what is a dynamic memory allocation, what are the functions we have to use to allocate the memory dynamically, how can you release the allocated memory using the free function, all these things I will discuss in detail. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First, let me define what is a static memory allocation. The allocating of memory during the compile time is called static memory allocation. So, if you allocate the memory during the compilation time, we will call it as a static memory. Now, what is the limitation of the static memory? I will discuss with an example. Let me take an array. What is an array? Array is a collection of homogeneous elements. So, you can create a integer array and store collection of integer constants. Similarly, if you create a character array, you can able to store collection of characters only. Now, let me discuss with an example. Let's take that I have declared an array A of size some 10. Then what will happen? You can able to store collection of 10 integer constants. And you know that array index will start from 0 and goes up to size minus 1. So you will have up to 9. So the, this is the array index. So the array index will start from 0 and it will go up to size minus 1. Here the size is 10. So 10 minus 9, 1 is 9. Now let's take that you have initialized some 5 values such as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then remaining values will be 0. If you allocate or if you initialize few elements in the array and remaining elements will have the value 0 if it is an integer array. If it is character array, you will have null values. If you did not initialize any one element in the array and if you are trying to access the any element which is there in a particular index, then it will give you the garbage values. I hope you know this arrays concept. I have discussed in detail about arrays in one of the video. Now, you know that array elements will be stored in contiguous memory allocation. Meaning is that, let's take that this base address is 100. And let's assume that you are running this program on a 32-bit compiler. In a 32-bit compiler, one integer variable will occupy 4 bytes of memory. If it is a 16-bit compiler, one integer variable will occupy two bytes of memory. Let's assume that I am running this program on a 32-bit compiler. If one integer variable will occupy four bytes, 10 such integer variables will occupy 10 into 4, 40 bytes of memory. Am I right or wrong? Now, if the base address is 100, then the first integer will be stored from 100th byte to 103 byte. Then next one will be 104 to 107, next one 108, 112, 116, 120, 124, 128, 132, 140, sorry 136, 136 to 139 because each integer will occupy 4 bytes of memory. So this is 136th byte to 139th byte. So this is about the array. Why I am discussing about array is that Look at here, if you have created an integer array of size 10, then during the compilation, you are allocating only 40 bytes of memory. Suppose let's take that, you have initialized only 5 elements, then the remaining 5 memory allocations, which is nothing but 20 bytes of memory, you are not utilizing, you are wasting the 20 bytes of memory. You want to store only five elements but you have created an array of size 10 then remaining 20 bytes of memory is unnecessarily wasted they are storing values 0 but user has not initialized them to 0 if he has initialized them to 0 okay he has some work with the zeros but he has not initialized because of the nature of the array you have initialized a few elements that remaining elements are zeros so this 20 bytes of memory is wasted similarly let's take that during compilation time, the user has created 20 bytes of memory to store 
5 integer elements. Then he want to store another 10 elements. That is not possible because during compilation time he has allocated 20 bytes of memory. If he want to add more elements that is not possible using the static memory allocation. One is that you are allocating the memory at the compile time. So there may be a wastage or you may need more memory during the runtime, which is not possible with the help of static memory allocation. To overcome that one, the C developers have introduced a concept called dynamic memory allocation. The process of allocating memory at runtime is called dynamic memory allocation. So the process of allocating memory during the compilation time is called static memory allocation. The process of allocating memory during runtime is called dynamic memory allocation. Now, what are the functions you have to use to allocate and delete the memory? All these things we will discuss now. We have four functions such as malloc, calloc, and we have realloc, and we have the free function. These are the four functions we will use in the dynamic memory allocation. These two are for allocating the memory and this is for reallocating the memory and this is for freeing the memory. Okay. Now, to use these four functions, you have to use a header file called hash include stdlib.h. Okay. If you want to use the string handling function such as strlen, strcpy, we have to include the header file called string.h. Similarly, if you want to use the printf and scanf functions, we are including the stdio.h. Similarly, if you want to use these four functions, you have to include the stdlib.h. Now, let me discuss each one in detail. Now, malloc, the full form of malloc is memory allocation. The full form of CALOC is contiguous memory allocation. Contiguous allocation, not memory allocation, contiguous allocation. And realloc is to reallocate the memory and free is to release the memory. Now let me discuss the generalized syntax of malloc. Then I will discuss few interesting points related to CALOC. Then easily you can able to distinguish between the malloc and CALOC. The generalized syntax of malloc is now this is the generalized syntax. Let me discuss what is the purpose of this one. You are giving the size underscore t which is an unsigned int and you have a size. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? You are specifying a size here. Remember why I am telling it is an unsigned int because the size cannot be a negative number. Always the sign will be a positive number 20 bytes, 30 bytes. You cannot say size as minus 20 bytes. Am I right or wrong? So that's why it is an unsigned int and how much size you want you are specifying here. So suppose let's take that user has entered 20 value here. Then 20 bytes of memory will be allocated and will be given to the user during the runtime. Now, remember one thing, this is an malloc function and this function by default, it will return a void pointer. Now, let's take that you want to store some n integer elements or n integer variables. Then how you have to do is that you have to write malloc. You don't know what is the size of each int and what is the n value also. So, you will write n into size of int. If you are running this program on a 32 bit compiler, you know that size of int will give you 4 bytes. So, 4 into n such. So, during the runtime, you will ask the user to enter the n value. If a user has entered n value as 10, 40 bytes of memory will be allocated. If user has entered the n value as 5, 20 bytes of memory will be allocated during the runtime. As you are storing the integers, you have to do the type casting because this integers base address has to be stored by an integer pointer only. So 
that's why you have to do type casting and you have to assign to a integer pointer p this name of the pointer p is a name of the pointer and it is a data type so that's why you are doing the type casting if you want to store a character array means characters then you have to do the type casting accordingly is it clear now let me discuss what will happen if the memory is allocated successfully let's take that user has entered n value as some 4 then 16 bytes of memory will be allocated am i right because one integer variable if you're running on a 32 bit compiler it will occupy four bytes of memory you can store four elements and the address will be contiguous suppose let's take that the base address is 100 then this one will be 104 108 112 now this pointer p will have the base address base address means starting address which is 100 if the memory is successfully allocated and the default values will be garbage values i think everyone know what is meant by default value if you does not assign any value into this memory allocation into the memory and you are trying to print the elements which is there in the particular location then it will give the garbage value if the due to some issues the memory is not allocated then it will return a null value to the pointer p okay is it clear if the memory is not successfully created during the runtime then pointer p will have the value null okay so this is about the ma lock now let me discuss about the ca lock now ca lock i can modify this one itself to make you understand here you have to use ca lock the full form of ca lock is contiguous allocation here in the memory lock we have only one parameter here you will have two parameters one is the n and another one is the size is it clear meaning is that suppose let's take that n value is user has entered as 4 and size here you are specifying as size of int you know that if it is a 32 bit compiler size of int will be 4 bytes so 4 of such 4 bytes of memory they want to allocate so it will allocate 16 bytes of memory okay so how you will write it is that because you want to store integer pointers so you are doing the type casting okay integer elements so you are doing the type casting and you are writing ca lock here here n into instead of that one you will write n comma size of int so the basic difference between ma lock and ca lock is ma lock will take only one parameter ca lock will take two parameters okay and the type casting this void pointer everything is same and another basic difference is that let's take that the memory is successfully created then the base address of that memory will be stored am i right in the variable p and the default values for a ca lock function is zeros as you are storing an integer constant so the default values will be zero whereas in ma lock it will be garbage values for a ca lock it is zeros and if the memory is not successfully created due to some issues again it will the pointer p will have assigned a value called null same as ma lock so this is about ma lock and ca lock and realloc is to reallocate the memory let's take that you have allocated some 20 bytes of memory using malloc function or calloc function okay you know how to allocate 20 bytes of memory to store some five integer constants and the base address is stored using a pointer p okay now these 20 bytes of memory even it is allocated during runtime after some time you understood that this 20 bytes of memory is not sufficient i want to store more integer constants using 20 bytes you can store only five integer constants now the user want to store 10 integer constants then he need 40 bytes of memory then how he can do is that he can reallocate the memory using realloc function even this function will return the void pointer and you will use a realloc and you will specify two parameters one is that 
the pointer name which is pointing the previous 20 bytes of memory. So here it is, let's take the P. And now what is the new memory you want? Let's take that you want 40 bytes as a new memory. Then you assign 40 here. Just as example I'm telling or here you have to specify m into what is the m value you the user can give m into size of int okay suppose user want 10 integers then he will enter the m value is 10 so 10 into 4 bytes 40 bytes of memory will be allocated so here you will give the new size how much you want and to the old memory what pointer it is pointing it will give and this function will return a void pointer now if you want to do the type casting so such a way that that 40 bytes of memory will be pointing by the pointer p then you will write int star you are doing the type casting realloc and the previous pointer name is p and then here i will write 40 bytes then remember one thing lot of students will confuse sir previously 20 bytes of memory is allocated now 40 they will assume that 60 bytes of memory is allocated no it is absolutely wrong previously 20 bytes of memory allocated now you want to make it to 40 bytes so now 40 bytes of memory allocated so extra 20 bytes of memory is allocated is it clear and whatever the previous values you have those values will be preserved so this is about realloc function and if you want to release any memory Remember one thing, when we have discussed about the files, what are the files we have open? It is our duty to close those files at the end of the program. So we used a function called fclose and the corresponding file pointer we have given as a parameter. Similarly, whatever the memory we have allocated during the runtime, it is our duty to release the memory. So to do that one, we will use a function called free and whatever the pointer which is pointing to that memory location the name of that one you have to give so then whatever the memory is allocated it will release so you would have understood one important point here in an malloc calloc realloc and free function we are using the pointers the pointers plays a major role in the dynamic memory allocation whatever the memory is allocated it will be accessed with the help of pointers only okay so this is what i want to discuss about the dynamic memory allocation in the next video i will discuss about malloc in detail and also i will discuss one program related to the malloc then i will discuss about calloc one program realloc one program like that i will discuss for your better understanding if you still have any doubts related to the dynamic memory allocation feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts as early as possible Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.